So I have had this ax for um, less than a day and um, took it out to do some splitting today. Uh, and I just couldn't be uh, more disappointed, not in the quality of the steel or how it splits or handles itself for the balance. In fact, um, I love everything about this ax except for one thing. Um, and it's the one thing that you just can't have um, inadequate on an ax. And that's, that's the hang. Um, split, you know, I'd say probably a third of a cord of wood. Um, mostly with this axe, although with uh, with a couple other axes, I really wanted to put this through its paces uh, because, as I'll get into later, this is my this is my second Council Tools axe, second new Council Tools axe, and both of them have failed. Uh, the first one was a Hudson Bay pattern axe that <clears throat> I mean flew off the handle in a way that I have never before experienced or since experienced. Um, on the downswing, hadn't even made contact with the wood. The hand, the head just flew off the handle. I mean, we're talking just right off, 15 feet away from me. Um, and, you know, it just left me with uh, just a, like a real uneasiness about council tools because I have, I have never had an ax fly off the handle. I have had handles break. Um, Never before or since have I had an ax head fly off the handle. And it was just extremely unsettling. I was out in the backyard. Um, I had, uh, you know, my son just playing around, um, one of them. And it, it just, so I, I felt like, you know, this could just be a one-off. So I'm going to give, um, I'm going to give Council Tools another shot. And I got this jersey pattern. Jersey patterns are my favorite ax pattern right up there. I mean, I like them as much or more than Tasmanian pattern axes. They're, they're just gorgeous. They're classic. Um, so I wanted to go with an American company. Council Tools is the first one that came to mind. I have a couple other Council Tools products. I have a 20-pound sledgehammer that is phenomenal. I love it. Nothing wrong with that. But uh, as I started to split with this, you know, I was looking at this barrel wedge here. And you look at that, it's too small. Like it just is, it's too small. And I was looking at that and I thought to myself, geez, that can't be moving, can it? And sure enough, it was actually sliding around ever so slightly. Uh, and then I started looking at that, uh, at that wood wedge and it's like, geez, you know, that is coming out of the uh, out of the eye, it's 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 actually loosening loosening itself, and and it's it's raising. And I don't know if you can see it, but you know, sure enough, my my fingernail catches, and it was flush. It was dead flush before. You could tell that somebody had sanded it with a belt belt grinder, uh, and then after they made everything flush, they put this wedge in there. Uh, but that wood wedge was coming loose too, and then you know, and then I started. Uh, I, I did this, and you can't hear it. This bench is too rattly. But on a on an oak round, uh, I I plopped it down. You know, we got the the cheek side first, and it just rattled, and it sounded loose. And I thought, oh man, I know exactly what is going wrong. This <laughs> this bear. I mean, probably what's what's wrong is this this wood wedge is just completely inadequate to provide the expansion that you really need to, uh, to give this head the friction that, uh, that it would need to keep from falling off. And then this barrel wedge, I mean, it, it's actually doing more harm than good. If you're gonna use a crappy barrel wedge like that, I mean, don't even use one, you know? There are ax companies that do not use any barrel wedges or pins or mechanical uh, uh, devices whatsoever. In, in their ax head, because if you have a good enough wood wedge, you don't need one. Gransfors Brooks is the notable one. Their axes are fine. Um, but this this barrel wedge, I, I think as it as as it, it twists and, and moves, it's actually 
harming the, the fibers. It's softening the fibers so they lose all of their staying force. And so, uh, and so sure enough, you know, I, I plop this into a, uh, into a round and I mean, it's, it's just loose. I can move it, you know, probably I would say um, a sixteenth of an inch at least. And I'm gonna look for my feeler gauge here. There we go. Um, you know, and, uh, and so I've got my feeler gauge here. Look at that. Look at that. I got this ax in the mail yesterday. <laughs> and I split a third of a cord of wood with it. And I'm going to see, uh, I'm going to see what I can see what I can fit in there just to get an idea for the tolerance here. Uh, but okay, so here's, here's 0 0.04 millimeter. Let's see if I can fit that. And actually it wiggles more on the back side here. Tighten her down. So not quite. Yeah, it fits right in there. So, and if there if there was enough flat surface for me to put this, it would go all the way through. So it's a gap that's greater than 0 0.0015. And uh, and it's just it's just totally totally unacceptable. Um, this this handle is preparing to fail right now. Um, let me see if maybe you yeah, we'll get you right down there. Watch this. Maybe you can't see that, but I can just rock it back and forth. And what's going to happen is that um, with repeated strikes, um, that handle being metal and harder than the wood is going to repeatedly compress the, the wood until at some point this just flies right off. Uh, and it's, and it's going to injure some, it's going to injure somebody else. Probably worst of all, it's not going to hurt you. It's going to hurt somebody else your family, your friends, your coworkers. Um, it's going to hurt, you know, your property, your house, smash a window, you know, absolute best case scenario. It's just going to fly off the handle and land somewhere harmlessly in the dirt. But, um, you know, I just thought to myself, two axes in a row, they're the only two axes I've ever owned from Council Tools, and both of them have been just absolute stinkers. Um, this is a $52 axe. And I would pay $52 just for this head. You know, if you're going to put bullshit handles on your axe, you know, just sell the head. Give me the head because I'm going to end, I'm going to end up rehanging this axe anyways. You know, give me the head for 40 bucks and I'll put my own handle on it. Um, but it, it's just to me absolutely upsetting because uh, the steel is wonderful. I'm, you know, I'm not going to send this axe back. I'm going to keep it, but I'm going to see if I can fix this uh, this hang. I'm going to take out that wedge, <clears throat> the barrel wedge. I'm going to see if I can take that wood wedge out without destroying it too much, uh, the handle. But um, I mean, everything about this axe is phenomenal. I absolutely love it from the forged bevels to the finish to the handle itself. Y you know, spend an extra uh, tenth of a penny on a, on a decent thick wedge, you know? Um, if I'm not making my own wedges out of, you know, whatever I have on hand, whether it's, you know, hickory or walnut or whatever, you know, I'll, I'll just go to Ace Hardware, Home Depot, and, you know, this is, this is five bucks, um, which I, is expensive, you know, it should be a couple bucks, but Ace Hardware, they, you know, they got their markup, but, um, you know, look at the thickness on that versus the, the thickness on the, on the top here. 
you know. Th this is thick because they don't know what size you need, and so you can thin it out however you want. But um, that's going to take up all the space that I need it to in the eye there. Um, but I'm going to take this... I'm going to take this barrel wedge out. I'm going to take that, um, that uh, wood wedge out if I can. And, but it, it, it's just a shame, you know, it's just a shame. They got everything right, but the most important, um, the, the most important and also least expensive part that they put in this ax is, is the failure point for both my axes. You know, it reminds me of a Volkswagen, GTI that I had and it had the the v6 engine uh, and it was it was awesome. It was fast. It was a manual I loved it um, It was a 2001 and One day the engine blew up. I mean just out of the blue the engine blew up and I took it to um, a buddy of mine who's a, a Volkswagen mechanic and you know, he said uh, He said that the uh, there there is a a mechanical part in the timing chain that stretches the timing chain out to where you where you want it to be the tolerance that you want it to be and uh this part you know if you had to buy that part from volkswagen it'd be it'd be 10 bucks 12 bucks um and i said geez did i like is that a maintenance item that i i missed you know i religiously changed my oil i changed my coolant i changed all of the fluids uh i mean i just i did everything that you're supposed to do on time i mean i was changing my oil probably every three thousand miles just because you know i love this car i wanted this to last forever and he said no you know if to to change this this uh um this piece that stretches the timing chain to the right tolerance you have to pull the entire engine so it's just designed to fail you know and and i look at this council tools axe and i think you know <laughs> that is designed to fail you know, if you put all of this time and all of this energy and effort uh, and money into making this steel head, which is wonderful, and, and then you put this wonderful hickory handle on it, and then you put this cheesy wood wedge in it, you know, it's like, come on. I mean, that's just fumbling the ball at the one yard line when nobody's even close. I mean, that, that's at the one yard line throwing the ball into the stands. I mean, it's just, it's just horrendous. I can't, I, I, I don't understand why they did that. Um, it's depressing to me that an American company like this with the history that they have would, would just botch their product like that in the way they do. Um, but that's two axes for me in the row, in a row with the same issue. Um, so I would say if, if you purchase a new ax from Council Tools, you know, I, I, I have no experience with the Velvacut line. I can't imagine they're any difference. They're, they're any different. Um, put it through its paces. You know, when you get it, really put it through its paces. Try to get it to fail. Um, and if it survives and the handle's not loose, you know, maybe you got a good one. Um, but, uh, but more than likely, I, I think you're probably going to have some issues and, and it's a safety thing. It's not a quality. It's not a, a, um, a user experience issue. I mean, you could very well seriously injure or kill somebody with this ax, um, with the manufacturing that council tools is, is using. I mean, I, I, uh, you know, I shudder to think what could have happened, um, if my son was any closer when I was splitting wood with, uh, with that Hudson, Hudson Bay ax. I mean, um, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to go as far to say, do not buy any ax from council tools at this point, unless you buy the head or you're planning to put your own handle on it. Don't buy it. Don't buy it. Cause this company, um, if they haven't killed somebody already, it's just a matter of time, um, with the way they're hanging this, this ax. So uh, be safe out there, um, know your tools, be familiar with your tools, know their limitations, um, and just be safe, be cautious and be safe.